What's well, so up guys, in this uh, tutorial we're going to make a texture sample um, and it's going to be like a checkered uh, map that we can use to check our UVs whenever we're texturing inside Maya or 3D Studio Max or whatever software we're working in. Um, so I'm just going to take you through how to make it from start to finish. Uh, some people might be familiar with some of the tools I'm using but if not I'll just try and explain them as best I can as we go along. Okay so we're just in Photoshop, first thing we need to do is just make a new file. So go up to file and new. Uh, for this here what we want to do is we're going to set the width to 256 pixels and the height to 256 pixels as well. Okay, uh, resolution is fine at 72 and color mode is going to be RGB. So once that's done if you just hit OK um, this is what we should get. Okay so <clears throat> Uh, first thing we're going to do now is we're going to put in some guides um, just so we know how to how we're going to block out um, this file. Okay, so we know we've made a file 256 by 256 pixels. Um, so what we want to do now is split it into quarters to begin with. The way we do that is view and then new guide. So this box will appear. Uh, we're going to set a vertical guide first. Uh, we're going to do half of 256, which will be 128. And then we just hit OK. You see it's put my vertical guide right down middle. We're going to do the same again now, but we're going to do it for horizontal. So we're going to go view, new guide, set it to horizontal, and we're going to go 128. And then just hit OK for that. Alright. Uh, so next thing we need to do is we need to divide this into four as well. Um, so we're going to get like a tiny little uh, square up in this corner. So we're going to go view, new guide, um, we're going to try 32, my maths are right, this will be right. Um, so that's our horizontal one, and then we're going to view, new guide again, go to vertical, um, and it should be 32 pixels again. Yeah, that looks about right. I don't know why I'm so surprised uh, that I got the maths right. Um, so we need to do that again, here, okay. Uh, so this vertical guide was 1 to 8 pixels. Our next one needs to be 160, I think. Uh, <laughs> this is me struggling to count in my head. Yeah, so we'll give that a try. So view, new guide. Um, needs to be a vertical guide. So it's 128 uh, plus 32, yeah, so it should be 160. That looks about right, it's fine. Um, so this is kind of going to give us like a decent enough kind of base so we can start blocking stuff out now. Uh, what we might want to do as well is maybe divide one of these little segments by four as well. That could be kind of quite handy for us. Um, so if we put in a new guide and we'll do it at 64 pixels vertical. And then we're going to do 64 horizontal as well. View. Guide. Um, we're going to do horizontal 64. Right. So that looks fine. Um, so there's a couple of different ways we can do this next bit. Um, you could do it with custom shapes tool down here. Uh, we could use the rectangle tool for it if we wanted. Um, that might be the best one to go for. No. Um, so what we're going to start off with is we want to make um, just a little black square to go up in the corner. What we're going to do is just double click on my foreground color down here. Um, we're going to set it to black, and um, we can actually do a a set size. Okay, uh, so we're going to go 32 by 32. Um, I want it to have no stroke, and I just want it to have a fill. Okay, so create a rectangle 32 by 32. Yep, that's fine. And there we go. Okay, and then all we want to do is just nudge it under that corner there. Right, so that's fine. Um, we want to duplicate that. Okay, so a couple ways you can do it. You can right click on it and go duplicate layer. You can click and drag it onto your new layer button down there. Or you can do control and J. It's just up to you what way you prefer to do it. Um, I'm just going to drag it onto there. And we're going to position that one down the bottom right hand corner as well. Okay. Um, now we're going to duplicate this again, 
but we're going to do it with a white rectangle. Okay, um, so I'll we'll leave that step for a couple of minutes because it's going to be pretty hard for us to see uh, what's going on here. So what we're going to do is going to make a grey rectangle to go in this corner here. Um, so if we use the, I'm going to use, just change my color um, to this kind of light grey I have. If anybody wants the values, it's, it's 196. That's what I'm using, 196 for the RGB. Uh, and there's the, uh, the code for it if you want to give that a try. Okay, but it doesn't really matter as long as we've got a, a kind of mid, mid or light tone grey for this. Um, so we want this to be exactly one quarter of the shape that we're working on at the minute. Uh, so 128 by 128 will work fine. 128 by 128. Same as we did before. Just click in the middle. Hit OK. Uh, and I'm just going to do my move tool. So we want this to sit up in this corner here. There we go. So that's fine. Uh, and then we're going to do the same again. We're just going to duplicate it. And I've accidentally grabbed one of my guides there. Um, we're just going to click and drag it down to this corner. There you go. Okay, uh, we're going to do the same again, only this time we're going to go with a slightly um, darker grey. Okay, so the grey I'm going to use this time is 103, 103, 103, that's a value for it. 67, 67, 67. If you want to put in the high code for it. So we're going to do the same again. Straight into options. 128 by 128. Seems fine, yeah. Click, hit OK. Didn't change the colour to the grey. There we go, right. And then we're going to just position that one in the corner. We're going to duplicate it again and put it in that corner. All right. So this should start to starting to take shape. So now we can start putting in the the white squares that I mentioned earlier on. Okay. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm actually just going to duplicate this one. Um, so Control and J on my key, my keyboard, and then if I hold down Shift and just click and drag it, it'll Photoshop will snap it into place for me. And then what I want to do, just double click here, and we're going to change that color just to white. Okay, um, and then we're going to duplicate that. And we're going to move that down to this corner here. Okay, so this is looking not too bad. Um, right. Okay, so for the next bit, I mean, there's a couple of ways you can probably do this. I'm just going to use the, the line tool for it. Uh, and basically all I want is, I'm just going to make a line that goes from this corner here, right down to that corner. Um, this might be the most accurate way to do it. There's a couple of different ways you can go about it. Um, so before I start with my line tool, I'm just going to make sure the fill is set to black. Um, would probably be the best for this one. And then all I'm going to do is click on this point here, and I'm just going to draw my line. Just right down to there. Um, as long as it's getting um, an angle of 45 degrees, that's what matters. If um, if you want to lock it into place, you just hold down shifts on the keyboard. Okay. Um, so that looks that looks about right. That's fine. Um, you can nudge that up if you want. Okay, just to make sure it hits that center point. Uh, from there, I'm just going to duplicate that one. And I'm going to go to um, just Control and T. This is my transform tool. And I'm just going to rotate it around. And then move it into place. Okay. And then whenever I'm happy, I can just push Enter. Um, so those lines there, I want to be underneath everything else. So I'm just going to put them down here until they're just above the uh, the grey rectangles we put in place. Okay, so that looks that looks all right. That's not too bad. Zoom out the 100%. You see, it looks a lot neater. Okay, um, so that's okay. That's that bit done. Uh, next thing we want to do is going to make a circle that kind of comes across most of these. Um, again, 
you could do this you could use the rectangle or the marquee tool for this uh, using the elliptical marquee tool if you wanted or you can just use a ellipse tool in your shape uh, I'm going to use the ellipse tool in the shape um, this is kind of a bit opposite this one I want it to have a stroke as in I want it to have like a border outside it but I don't want it um, I don't want it to have a fill okay so I'll make it first and then I'll show you how to modify it so I'm going to just click and drag here um, if you hold down alt on your keyboard uh, what you'll find is it makes the circle based on the point that you clicked in the middle so when I let go alt it's just dragging the circle like that when I hold down alt it's making it based on that center point point. and see I'm just dragging it until it hits that 32 pixel line that I put in place okay I'm holding down shift as well um, just to lock it in the proportion okay so without shift I can do stuff like that with shift on it has to keep it in proportion so you'll find that a lot of these shortcuts work for all the Photoshop tools so I'm just gonna get it to there and then just let go okay so that's fine uh, from here I just want to go up here and change the fill to have none which would be this option here and then just change the stroke to be white okay obviously 20 pixels is way too much uh, so you want to turn that down so we get to enter and maybe a lot less than five maybe. Um, probably two might be enough yeah two seems fine two or one would be okay for this to be honest um, right, so one seems okay that's not too bad right and then that's that done um, so we've just got one last piece that we want to put in place um, I've just realized I've actually changed the color I've not changed the color of this one okay um, so how do we do it if you want to see anything that's underneath um, where you click in Photoshop if you right click it'll show you a list of all the layers so if I right click it right underneath where I click there is rectangle one copy three and then rectangle three copy if I click on there it'll send you to that layer um, I just want to set that to be white there you go that's better looking um, so I just want to put in some text and a little kind of arrow or prism of some type uh, I'm going to explain why in a bit okay so I'm going to do straight in here again I'm going to go to my polygon tool um, number of sides I've set the is three so whenever I click and drag I'm going to get a, a triangle and I just want to set this to be maybe around here that looks fine okay uh, I'm going to change the color of that um, to be black uh, I'm just going to turn it I'm just going to actually gonna flip it so I'm going to go edit transform path and then flip vertical let's so shift it down here okay right and the reason for that is whenever I put this on as a texture test it's going to let me know if my texture is flipped or not if it's the right way around first of all and I'm going to put some little text in here now um, and that'll let me know if, if stuff's actually the right way right way up um, so to put it in the text just grab your text tool um, you can do it any color you want I'm just going to go with like a quite a bright red for this one and I'm going to click and drag a box I'm just going to do my initials for it and obviously scale this down quite a bit it's not quite big um, maybe about 30 might do better I'm just going to move it into place there okay so it should be alright there right um, I'm just going to turn off the guides now because we don't really need to see them anymore um, so I'm going to go view show and then I can turn off guides. So this is what we should be left with now. Um, and that's kind of ready to go. Okay, so this is obviously 256 by 256. Um, and we want to fill it now into a space that's 1024 by 1024. Okay, so now that we've got this 256 by 256 image made, uh, next thing for us to do is to make a larger version of it. And we're going to fill it in there and we're going to do a quick offset as well uh, so offsets are a tool you use quite often when you're making tileable textures 
Um, so what we're going to do is um, I'm going to turn this into pattern first. Um, so I'm just going to select all of it. So we can go select all, or you see the shortcut is Control and A. Uh, from there, you want to go to Edit, uh, Define Pattern, and then just give it a name. So we'll just call it Texture Tile, and hit OK. Uh, from here, we're going to make a new file. So we can go File New, and we're going to set it to be 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels. Just hit OK to that. Uh, so this gives us a brand new blank file, and then we're going to go to Edit and Fill. And where you would normally see up here, quite often it uses foreground color or background color. Uh, we're going to scroll down until we see pattern. And then when you click here, you'll get a list of kind of recently used patterns or recently added patterns. And there's one I just made. Okay. So texture tile tells me the resolution of it there as well. Uh, we'll go ahead. Okay. There you go. So it's filled in properly there. It looks okay. Um, but what we want to do now is we want to just kind of offset it. Because um, that's not really... That's not really that tileable for checking. Um, so from there, we're going to go to Filter, Other, and then Offset. If I just move this out to the side, I'll show you what happens. When I tweak this, you can see what it's doing is it's it's sliding the image um, left or right. Okay. Now, the undefined areas is, is the bit that's get left empty. If I set that to background, you can see what happens. So when I'm offsetting that image now. It's moving it off, and it's um, the gap that's left. It's just using the background color. Um, you can do repeat edge, edge pixel, which means the bit that's left now, it's taking the last pixel and just stretching it out across it. But we don't want to use either of those. We actually want to use wrap around. Okay, so what a wrap around will do is it'll look at the other side of the image and I'll just repeat it over. Um, so to set this up properly, just make sure it's set on wrap around. We're going to go with an offset of 128 um, by 128. Which, if you remember from the last thing we made, we made 256 by 256. So half of that each way would give us a quarter up in the up in the image, and then you just hit OK, and that's basically it done. Okay, um, so we can save this now. Uh, we can go file, uh, save as. You want you might want to save it um, in a like a default folder you're going to use quite often. Um, if I was to save it, save it, Matty. Save it in here somewhere. Um, save it as JPEG or PNG, it's totally up to you. Um, for this year, I'll just save it as JPEG. So UV mapping is what we'll call it. Um, set that as JPEG. Let's save. Uh, we want it to be fairly high quality. It's not, it's not a massive file anyway. Uh, so leave it at 12 and then just hit OK. And there you go. Um, so that's just us generating our own little uh, UV mapping test file that we can now put in our models just to see if our UVs are going to stretch and stuff. You can download these from the internet, um, you can get them from all over the place, but it's just nice to kind of go over some of the tools that you might use. Um, so if you found this helpful, um, let me know. If you have any comments or any questions or anything, obviously use the comments box below. Um, and then keep watching for more videos and stuff. In the next tutorial, I'm going to take this, we're going to apply it to a model, and we're going to have a look at how it stretches out and stuff.